What's up, everybody? This is PDQ's Patch Tuesday, August 2024 uh, recap here. We've got a special guest, Tara, with us in our new, I don't know if you noticed, some changes with the environment. Set. Yeah, our set is new. I mean, we've got some new stuff happening here at PDQ, but today we're talking about Patch Tuesday. Are you excited? Yes. Can we do it, though? Can we do what? No, Ready? don't make me do yeah! it. Yeah! Oh, okay. Gosh, Ready? Gingy Twins activate. Okay, let's Sometimes talk it's just better to make Tara happy. It is. It really is. All right, guys. So before we actually jump into the Patch Tuesday notes, yeah. there's two things that I want to talk about. First of all, what the frick is going on? I don't know. I mean, first we have like CrowdStrike. And oh, this, is, yeah. this is all in like the last 30 days. First mm-hmm. we have CrowdStrike. Yeah. Really bad. Okay. We don't even need to talk about that one because everybody's kind of like over it at this point. It was kind of uh, bad. Yeah. Yeah. And now we've got Intel and AMD both with exploits impacting their processors. Uh oh. That if somebody exploits them, basically make like bricks them. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Not like, hey, let me just, you know, fix it. No, no, no. There's no fixing it. It's just like brick, throw it away type of thing. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that, we have just data breaches like crazy. Mm-hmm. I was just mm-hmm. reading today, like everybody's name, address, aliases, and social security numbers are like all leaked out on there online. Those aren't important, Brock. So, we don't I mean, need those. Good time to be just, in tech. Yeah. There's just personal privacy is not a thing anymore. It's not. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about real quick mm-hmm. is I just want to give a shout out to all the sysadmins out there working in the EDU space. Because yeah. this is a tough month for those guys. I worked in education. You worked in education. August is a tough month. You've got all of your students coming back. You're trying to wrap up projects that you had going on all summer. And you've got teachers that have been on break for the last three months. And I guarantee like 90% mm-hmm. of those teachers have forgotten those their passwords in those three months. Uh, all of them. Yeah. By the way, it's not the students you need to worry about. It's the teachers. Yeah. I love the students. Yeah, usually. I mean, yeah. so if you do, it's also hard too if you support Chromebooks and you support those for students, you're probably swimming in Chromebooks right you now. You are. You are. And now you get to drop everything and deal with Patch Tuesday. That's true. So shout out to you guys. Mm-hmm. It is National Filet Mignon Day. So maybe go and treat <gasps> yourself tonight. Okay. So, all right, let's look at the patches. It's a reasonable month as far as the numbers go. Total exploits patch 93. Critical patches, though, nine and already known or exploited is Ooh. 10. Now, Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, we've been doing this for a while, and I can't think of a month that has hit more critical patches or already known and exploited patches. But, you know, don't quote me on that. There could have been higher months. But that is way up there. This first one's going to be CVE 2024 9.8. This is a 9.8. This one's kind of a doozy because this one, this vulnerability impacts basically all Windows devices that have IPv6 enabled. So IPv6 that people are using. So literally dozens of people are affected. Dozens of people. <laughs> no, uh, no it, actually, I'm joking, but Windows boxes actually come with it enabled now. So I'm joking. But if you didn't go in and turn it off, you are affected. Yes. So that's serious. Yeah. And um, there is some, I, they do, so Microsoft lists this as a low complexity, mm-hmm. but speaking with some security researchers, they're like, uh, mm-hmm. I would say it's actually higher complexity to be able to pull this off. You have to know, like, you know, you're not necessarily getting responses back from those, those packets that you craft, letting you know if the vulnerability is working or not. So it's mm-hmm. just kind of like blasting it out there. The information's not really out there either. So didn't I, you say though, that Microsoft has already remediated this? Well, I mean, this one, they have a patch available for it. Oh, patch available. Okay. One of two things, uh, either disable IPv6, which I'm a big fan of because I hate trying to remember how to read IPv6, uh, or two, deploy the patch. So, I mean, there you go. For all you lazy sysadmins out there that never even implemented it in the first place, your idleness paid off. Congratulations. (laughs) Uh, All right. Next, we got a twofer. Okay. We usually don't do this, but I figured I'd throw these in here. These are kind of special. So we've got CVE 2024-38166 and CVE 2024-38109. And the first one, 38166, this one involves Microsoft Dynamics 365 cross-site scripting vulnerability that can lead to spoofing. Okay, bad. And then the next one, 38109, uh, ironically, is the Azure Health Bot that can be used to reach an elevation of privilege. So I don't Azure know. Azure again. Yeah, Azure's in a rough spot. But the reason I included these ones is because you don't have to do anything. Microsoft already remediated these. You don't have to deploy a patch. You don't got to do nothing on your end. They basically just like threw them out there with the patches and just Mm -hmm. said, hey, we took care of it for you. Don't ever say that we never did anything for you. 
We like those. Yeah. We, we like, like to those. not it do anything. Doesn't, it doesn't happen very often. Okay. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind if it happened more. Yes. All right. Last one. Uh, CVE 2024 38213. Now, this one I like because it's really like your classic spoofing mm -hmm. attack. Okay. Um, so this one, you know, you get a uh, malicious file attached to an email, send it out to a user who mm -hmm. is more likely to click on something than not, then you're, you, you're in business. You've got what you need. So this one actually though, the, the bad thing about this one is that it bypasses the Defender smart screen user experience. Mm. So, you know, that usually kind of helps people from falling, giving into those intrusive th thoughts, if you will. Don't so, do anything stupid. Yeah, exactly. And this stops yeah. them. Mm. Yeah. So this one's not going to save them for you. So I would patch this one sooner rather than later, later unless, of course, you trust your users not to just hey, click on random links. I don't. Yeah, neither do I. Okay, so patch this one. Yeah. All right, guys, that one is going to wrap it up. Definitely head over to the MSRC uh, security update guide over on Microsoft's website to take a look at the rest of the vulnerabilities, see which ones impact your environment and uh, which ones need to be deployed as soon as possible. But we're having steak tonight, right? We are having steak tonight. Yeah. If you do need help with your patching, make sure to try out PDQ Connect, which can patch your on-prem, your remote devices, and can automate the entire process. Also, if you want to know more about the vulnerabilities that are impacting your environment, take a look at PDQ Detect, which will not only show you the vulnerabilities that are impacting your environment, but they will also like score them and organize them in a way that's easy to take action. It'll mm -hmm. be like, hey, here's mm -hmm. the ones that are most important to tackle first. Super easy to take action on that type of stuff. So... Anyways, thanks for joining me today. You are welcome. We'll see if we can make this happen more often. Thanks for watching. For PDQ, I'm Brock. See you next time.